kutui. Au sata hiku suku shikiti. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Of the Lord is worthy to be praised and adored and adored. So we lift up holy and sing one accord, one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of our Lord. Of our Lord is worthy to be praised and adored, and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our Lord, our Father, our Jehovah, we bless your name. We thank you, Father, for another unique opportunity to be in your presence, to share your word. Lord, we have read in the scriptures that as you were teaching, power was available to heal. Lord, our Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will be inside of your word tonight, mm -hmm. and that as your word goes out, there shall be healing, mm -hmm. there shall be conversion of soul, mm -hmm. there shall be conversion of circumstances mm -hmm. to the better, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This this lesson today shall be a blessing to every hearer, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you, we are grateful, Lord. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm -hmm. You are welcome once again. My name is Pastor Michael Babatunde. This is Victory International Church Bible Studies on this Wednesday. And the topic today is the breakthrough spirit of Fares. The breakthrough spirit of Fares. Um, it, it comes from a very unusual scripture. In the book of Genesis chapter 38, uh, there was no story leading to it. And there was no story leading after it. It was as if God, God deliberately planted that story into the, that section of the Bible. Um, but as we go on and we continue to study this particular scripture, you will begin to see that there, with God there is no accident. Everything that God does is, is deliberate. The breakthrough spirit of Pharaohs. I will read, it's a very longish passage in the book of Genesis chapter 38 from verse 1 to 30. I will create your indulgence that you bear with me. I want to read the whole thing. But as I read, I will, I will explain. I will, I will begin to teach from the reading. But I'm going to read the entire passage. The Bible says, And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hera. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er. Number one thing you said, see, there's the, the Judah was the son of Jacob. And God had strictly warned them not to marry from among the Canaanites. But he decided he wanted a wife from among the Canaanites. And when they had a child, he called the name of the child Er. It may not mean error as we would normally look at it in the English language, but the name was Er. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet again conceived, and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Chezib when she bare him. Now, and Judah took a wife for Er, the firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. 
I pray for you today that your son will not be wicked. Your children, none of your children shall be wicked. None of your children shall offend God. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it, it was God who, the Bible said, God killed him because he was wicked. And he was wicked in the sight of the Lord. In the sight of the father, he may have been a perfect child or maybe a troublesome child. But for God, for the purpose of God, this child was not worthy to live. Your child will not offend God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then it went on, and Judas said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Now, it was the tradition in those days that uh, if the elder brother had married and died, the younger brother would take over the wife. I don't think that uh, kind of practice still goes on today, but I knew that it still went on during the time of my grandparents. But this day, I don't think it, it goes on anymore. But it was their tradition then. So there was really, we could not say that there was anything wrong in that their tradition at that time. So Judah said unto Onan, take your brother's wife, marry her, so that when she begins to have children, it will still be within their family. But Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass that when he went into his brother's wife, he spilled it on the ground so that the woman would not become pregnant. And God saw through the subterfuge, the deception, and God considered it a wickedness. And the, the Bible says, and the thing which he did displeased God and the Lord slew him. I pray that our ways shall be pleasing unto God mm -hmm. in any way, in whatever we do, that our ways shall not be an error before God mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Then the story went on. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he will also die, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now, the woman had been married to the first person. The first person died, was bequeathed to the second person. The second person died. Uh, now the father said, well, maybe there was something on this woman that has been killing the children. So he said, you better go back to your father's house. I don't, he, he didn't tell her that. He said, go to your father's house. When the third child grows up, I will call you to come and marry her. But he was stylishly uh, sending her away. Uh, the Tamar woman would have gone home in disgrace because he left the family house. He left. She left her parents on the understanding that she was already married. Now she was being sent home, uh, a widow times two, rejected by the family that married her. Now let's continue the story. And in the process of time, the daughter of Shua's, Judah's wife, died. So Judah's, Judah also lost his wife. And Judah was comforted and went up into the sheep shearers to Timar, he and his friend Hira, the Adulamites. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, her father-in-law went up to Timah to, to share his sheep. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timah. For she saw that Shela was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. After a long time, the third son had now grown. Judah's wife had died. The woman, Tamar, has been keeping herself waiting for the day they will invite her to come and marry the third son. But they didn't invite her. Then she heard that her father-in-law was coming into her village for, for a business transaction. And she knew that it was as if they had deceived her. So she put on, she put her widow's garments off from her and covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnah, 
for she saw that Selah was grown and was not given unto him to wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned in unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Let me sleep with you. I will pay you. Because he didn't know that it was, it was her daughter-in-law. And she said, what will thou give me so that you can sleep with me? And he said, that, that is Judah, I will send thee a kid because a kid was a, a goat. Apparently valuable at that time. Uh, maybe it was of enough value to be a payment to sleep with uh, a prostitute. And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? Because you don't have the kid, the animal with you now. What can I, what can you deposit until you are able to bring the goat or the sheep for me? And the woman suggested that for you to have your way, you will need to deposit your ring, your bracelet, and your staff. Now, the Bible says, and he gave it to her. That is a, an error of judgment. It, it was quite a frightening thing when I read it. Because for a, a Jew, those are the symbols of power. He made himself naked. He made himself vulnerable because he wanted to sleep with a woman. The Bible said he gave his signet. The signet is, is, the, is the, the symbol of authority that he had. Now, because up till now, there are still some instances that when people want to, to sign any very important document, they put their, they put their ring as a signature on the, on the paper. The, the ring on, on the finger of a Jew is, is a sign of authority. The other thing that he gave away was his bracelet. Bracelet was the, was the symbol of his identity. It tells who you are. Anything may happen to anybody at any time. When they see the bracelet, it will enable them to identify that this is this person. He gave that away as well. Then he also gave away his staff. Many of us would have read what the staff did in the hands of Moses. The staff turned into power. This man gave his own staff to a prostitute. He gave, he gave it away cheaply. Now, after he had done what he did with the woman, he went back to his village after concluding his business. Then he sent the kid, the animal, so that he could retrieve all the vital things that he left behind. But they looked everywhere for the woman and they couldn't find her. Because, I mean, of course, she was she was a, a daughter-in-law who, who covered herself. They asked the people of the place, they said they didn't know of any prostitute that uh, used to sit in that place. So they gave up. And they returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass, about three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath played the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. She had become pregnant by being a prostitute around. And the first judgment that came out of the mouth of Judah was that, Bring her forth, let her be burnt. What a judgment. He had abandoned her. He had no intention of giving his son to her to marry. And when, when he heard that the woman had become pregnant, he said, bring her so that we can burn her. Bring her so that we can kill her. He, he quickly jumped to conclusion. He quickly jumped to, to the wrong conclusion about this woman. Many still do it today because we, 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 
we reach judgment a lot of times when we have not had the whole story. We only hear a side of the story and we are quick to rush to judgment. I pray that God will forgive you. Amen. In any way that you have rushed to judgment without actually hearing the whole, the totality of the story. And in this case, it was actually the cause of it. Because when they brought the woman, the woman said, well, I was made pregnant by the person who gave me this, the ring, the bracelet, and the staff. He says, who's this are? When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man, who's this are, am I with child? And she said, the son, I pray thee, whose are these? Who, whose are these? The signet, the bracelets, and the staff. Judah had no option but to acknowledge them. I can imagine the, the, the embarrassment, the shame that he faced that day. She had, she, he said, she had been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Shela, my son. But that was the beginning of the story, actually. Because the consequence of that relationship, should I call it a relationship, or dalliance, or the meeting between Judah and Tamar, led to pregnancy. Now, when it was time to deliver these babies, they were twins. That were, they, that were in her womb. And it came to pass that when she traveled, when it was time for her to have the baby, that the one put out his hand. And the midwife quickly took the hand that came out of the uh, mommy's body and put a, uh, a thread around it, around the, the, the hand. But the, the child pulled back the hand into the womb. And as soon as, as he did that, the other one came out. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he drew back his hand, that behold, his brother came out. And the midwife said, how hast thou broken forth? And because you were not expected to come out first, we knew the person who came out first, we already put a tread on his hand. How come you broke forth? This bridge be upon thee. Therefore, his name was called Fares. Fares was a breakthrough. You will break through. Amen. You will find a way through Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. I want to tell you this evening that Fares is a spirit. It is a spirit that ensures that your destiny is preserved. Amen. They may have been running ahead of you. They may have had the advantage ahead of you. Your story may even be so occluded that it, it, it looked as if there will be no meaning to your life. But you are breaking through. You will break through. Maybe Fares broke through. You too, you will break through. <laughs> the spirit of, of Fares fights for you when things look very bleak. Because things were, the person who came out first had an edge in those days. It was necessary. I, I was born after twins. And uh, they revered those who are the first to come out. They give them a special kind of respect. And in fact, they are the senior. They may have had only maybe a few minutes ahead of each other. But it is still regarded that the one that came out first is the elder. But in his, as a spirit, the spirit of Fares fights for you to make sure that you break through. Mm -hmm. It is a confirmation that the purpose that God has created you shall be actualized. Mm -hmm. No matter what may, be, may have been working against you, mm -hmm. the spirit of Fares will make sure that you stay ahead, mm -hmm. that you break through. Mm -hmm. Life may not want you to be in front of the queue. Mm -hmm. They may have put a barrier before you that you will not get there. But the spirit of Fares will make sure that uh, uh, you are not going to be a spectator. Mm -hmm. You are going to be spectated at. Mm -hmm. You are going to be wondered at. Mm -hmm. Because you will break through. Mm -hmm. Against all odds, you are going to break through. Mm -hmm. uh, your disadvantage may be glaring.
Pharez. It had been predicted to be Pharez that in Ezekiel. And it's right, it is. It got overturned and overturned it until it came, until it was Fares that came out. But it came out first. First. Amen. You will on your path that I wanted to stop you from coming be able to get through in the name down to say no we are the one society may have put you at a disadvantage but I am saying to you this evening God will make a way for you you will yet get to where you are supposed to get to. You will achieve that which God has proposed that, that you will achieve. You will not be at the back. No, you will not be a failure. This is not the last you will be. You are getting through. You are getting there. You will succeed. In the name of Jesus, circumstances may have conspired to slow you down, but that is the worst they can do. They can only slow you down. They cannot stop your progress because you will get to where you will get to. God has destined that you will get forward. God has destined that you will, you will rise high. God has destined that you will be an overcomer. You are becoming an overcomer. You shall overcome in the name of Jesus. Hello, Shenda Hekatai. Society may have put you at a disadvantage. I'm saying to you today, God will give you an advantage. God will give you the advantage in the name of Jesus. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, God will make it possible for you by the Spirit of God that dwells in you, by the Spirit of God that has been working in you, by the Spirit of God that has made you a winner, uh, you will win through and through. In the name of Jesus, they normally put out their put put forward their hands to be recognized. Many of you will recognize it in class. You know the answer before you can say the answer. Somebody had already put up their hands, and at the end of the day, what they will say will have no meaning. It will be the wrong answer, but you know the right answer before you put up your hand again. They are already ahead of you until they recognize you, and the teacher say, "Yes, you can say it." And now you give the exact answer to the question that the teacher is asking. And every one of us, they are looking at you and thinking, okay, so he knows it this well. So she has all the answer. You will have all the answers. Mm -hmm. You will break through. Mm -hmm. The world will hear your voice. They have been trying to block your voice. They have been trying to make you silent so that the world, your world will not hear you. And your voice is getting out from today. In the name of Jesus, I am no shaker. I decree divine recognition for you. When God recognizes you, nobody can ignore you. Your word will not ignore you. You are coming out. You must continue to use your head. You see, they used their hand. That was what the first boy did. He put his hand. Yeah, I am here. I am here. I should be the one. But you must be using your head. Because your head is where wisdom is. Your head is where your stature is. When the head came out, they had no option but to recognize. The woman said, how did you break through? Somebody is going to ask you, how did you break through? And it is because the, God, the almighty God has made you the head. You are not the tail. You are breaking through. You are breaking through. In the name of Jesus, to the surprise of them, I dare say to the chagrin of them, you are breaking through. In the name of Jesus, you may have been lagging behind in one form or the other up until now, but you will overtake them. You will surpass them. You will overtake them. You will surpass them. What, the, what, you, what God will use you to achieve and to accomplish will make their own accomplishment pale into insignificance. Uh, because you are rising high. 
in the name of Jesus. They have gone ahead. They are flailing their hands. But you are coming through with your head. God will give you wisdom. They will withdraw their hands. When they see that your head has come through, ah, they will concede victory to you. They have been raising their hands for quite a while, calling, calling attention to themselves. But when you break through with your head, they will withdraw their hands. Amen. All their opposition to you, they will go into reverse. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. unexpectedly, you will emerge. Amen. Your victory will shock them. Amen. Are you listening to me this evening? Your, your victory will shock your, your, your traducers. Amen. The people who have ganged up against you and saying that you will not achieve the goodness, you are not getting anywhere. Your victory will shock them. Now, people who thought that this is the way you will end up, that you will just live this ordinary life, uh, they've got another thing coming. Because you are breaking through. You are rising higher. You are breaking through. They will ask the question, how did she do it? How did he do it? People of your color are not meant to achieve what you are achieving. People of your of your stature are not meant to get to where you are getting to. But the Almighty God will help you. He says, I will help you. You warm Jacob. The Almighty God will help you. You will break through. You will get there. You will get there. In the name of Jesus, nothing shall be able to stop you. I see you breaking through. I see you celebrating. I see you calling a party to celebrate. This world. The people who are in the world, they are very eager. They can be recognized. That is why you will use your head. And with your head, you will break. You will do it well. You will succeed. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no accident on your path. There shall be no mishap on your path. In the name of Jesus, their initial, initial announcement was premature. They have initial showing, showing of hand. I know the answers. I have all the solutions. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a waste of time. It's, it's premature. In verse 28, the Bible says, this one came out first. You will come out first. Amen. You will come out on top. Amen. You will come out on top. Amen. In verse 29, says, then it happened. Ah, it is going to happen for you. Amen. Uh, the, that victory is going to happen for you. But the Bible says, and it happened. Then it happened. Uh, you are going to say it has happened. Mm -hmm. You are going to say that victory is going to, hey, you are going to testify that it happened. Mm -hmm. that, that long awaited victory, it will happen. Mm -hmm. you, you, as of this morning, you still thought you are, you are at a disadvantage. But we are going into the month of April where you will be stepping into victory. Mm -hmm. Good news all around you. Mm -hmm. Good news all around you. Unusual help will locate you. In the name of Jesus, you will be able to take the advantage. An advantage will uh, emerge for you, and you will take that advantage. Uh, you will take that advantage. If you receive it, say loud, Amen. Amen. It says, let the breach be upon you. Let the breach be upon you. Uh, was the woman angry? Uh, and who was to deliver baby? The baby has been, what was the meaning of let this breach be upon you? You know, the, Fares means the breaker. You will break through. Amen. The strength to break through, receive it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Micah chapter 2 in verse 13, the Bible says, the breaker is come up before them. They are broken up and have passed through the gate, and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them, and the Lord on the head of them. The breaker, you are among the breakers. You will break new grounds. You will break new grounds. You are not hearing me. You will break new grounds in the name of Jesus, because the hand of the Lord shall help you. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, it says, I have, you have been appointed to pluck and break down. See, I have this day 
set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You have the energy of a breaker. Nothing will withstand your strength. The enemy will not be able to withstand your strength. When Pharez came with his head, everything made way for him. You can imagine the, the, the struggle, the battle, but the head came through. You are coming through. And the struggle has been hard this time. All this while, it has been like a struggle. That the, the God is not quiet. God has been working, has been working and working on your behalf. And I'm announcing to you that you are breaking heaven. You are breaking through. You are breaking through. You are coming through in the name of Jesus. And you know, the, the conclusion of this story will tell you that as the as the, the scripture was put in a in a very funny way in Genesis chapter 38, that he had no connection with Genesis 37 and had no connection with Genesis 39, but it had connection with the beginning and the end in the Bible. That child of contention that was born by Tamar, that child that was conceived, gave birth to, to, to Pharez and, and, uh, and Zara. In the book of Matthew chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, I want us to read the genealogy of Jesus because they are to be part of the foundation. And that's why Jesus is a, must come from a family of, of, of people who break through. You are from the family of people who break through. You are breaking through yourself. In the name of Jesus. The book of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, it says, the book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judah and his brethren, and Judah begat Phares and Zerah of Tamar, and Phares begat Esrom, and Esrom begat Aram. And that was how it went until it begat Jesus. It was not Zerah. That, that was part of the genealogy of Jesus. It was the guy who broke through. You are breaking through. You are breaking through. We will celebrate with you in the name of Jesus. That is how far we are able to go tonight. And I believe that God has sent a word to you. This word shall not count against you. It shall be a blessing unto you you shall break through in the name of Jesus. It is not by any other means. It is only in Jesus Christ that you can break through. Only in Jesus. Any other means is a counterfeit. It's only to, it will result in you flailing with your hands. But with Jesus Christ, you will be coming through with your head. In Jesus Christ, you are assured of victory. But you must have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Otherwise, you cannot walk with him. You must accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you have never, in any day, made the statement or made the confession and called Jesus Christ to come and be your Lord and Savior, you have the opportunity tonight. All you need to do is to say a simple prayer with me and Jesus will come into your life and enable you to break through. You'll be family that breakthrough. If you like and you mean it with the bottom of your heart, please say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight of my sins, your child. Help me to follow that I shall not fall off the wall. My Lord, my Father, take me by the hand through the path of righteousness. Thank you for saving me. If you have prayed that prayer, heavens are rejoicing over you. You are part of the family that breakthrough. 
you are going to break through. We will celebrate with you. God bless you. Until we come your way again next week, it has been me, Pastor Michael Idouba Batode, Victory International Church. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye for now.